In the weather today, the remains of Hurricane Barrel moving through the eastern Great Lakes region. At the current moment, 1.5 million power outages in Texas, catastrophic failure of the electrical grid in the Houston area from what was only Category 1 winds. 11% of the state of Texas without power this evening. Most of those outages in Houston up into the woodlands. Let's take a look at the performance of the key models, looking at the GFS in red. The thinner red line, that's going to be the interpolated GFS. The yellow is the NHC forecast. The pink color is the ensemble mean. And the very thin lines, those are going to be the ensemble members. And July 5th, that's really when we saw the confidence of the models increasing and we got better clustering of those model solutions. Now, it is instructive to look at Interstate 10. If you check out basically where the mean of those tracks are, you can see them creeping gradually towards Houston, especially on the 7th. And finally, by the morning of the 8th, this was painted to be very close to the Western Houston Metro. And this is a feature coming up in the next version of Digital Atmosphere. There were definitely a lot of problems with rain. You can see four-day totals in the Houston area, anywhere from 5 up to 18 inches. That's going to be right up there in northwest Houston. And that rain track moved all the way up into East Texas, Tyler, Longview, and up to Texarkana, where they got 7 inches. For this evening, here's how the weather map looks. The remains of Hurricane Barrel crossing Lake Erie and out ahead of it, a frontal system in New York. Severe thunderstorms, tornado watches, tornado warnings all through western New York and a cold front extending down through the Appalachians. A little stationary front through Kansas into Nebraska and Wyoming. Up to the north, some rather pleasant conditions, but down south, temperatures going right back up into the 100s. And we've got heat advisories out for the Houston area. Doesn't look too bad on the surface map, but the combination of power outages and high heat indexes means potential health problems. There's our look at the visible satellite imagery, the center of circulation right up there north of Cleveland. A large dry slot moving into western Pennsylvania and Ohio. And it does look kind of cloudy around Ohio, but if we go up into the mid-levels, you can really see that dry slot punching right across the center of that circulation. That's one reason that the storm is dissipating. Out ahead of it, a strong baroclinic zone and convergence, producing severe thunderstorms all the way from Albany, the Adirondacks, all the way down towards Washington, D.C. The Storm Prediction Center has an enhanced risk of severe thunderstorms for much of upstate New York, central Pennsylvania, and into New England. We have tornado watches all the way from New Hampshire back into upstate New York, Syracuse down to Scranton and Harrisburg, and severe thunderstorm watches from Baltimore into Virginia. There were tornado warnings out earlier for western New York, but at this time we've only got severe warnings for Vermont, central New York, and down into the Appalachians. Back on Monday, as Barrel came ashore, we had numerous tornado reports all the way from Longview down towards Jasper and on up into Arkansas. Total of 19 tornadoes, according to this graphic. I haven't totaled them up myself. Yesterday, a small outbreak in southwestern Indiana around Evansville. And for today, a cluster of mostly wind damage. Haven't had any confirmed tornadoes, but a couple specks of hail around Buffalo and Watertown. In the southeastern region, the main problem is heat. South Carolina up to eastern North Carolina and into Virginia. Heat indexes were expected to be 109 this afternoon in Raleigh, Winston, Wilmington, and Charleston. And things getting pretty unstable off of the coast of Georgia and Florida. You can see some highly sheared anvils ventilating to the west. This is an area that may come together over the next couple days. We'll take a look at that on the GFS model graphics. 
In the southern U.S., heat advisories in effect for the Houston area due to those heat indexes up to 101, that area being very sensitive due to the power outages from Hurricane Barrel. In New Mexico, the Weather Prediction Center has a marginal risk of excessive rainfall across all of the state, with a slight risk of excessive rainfall in the eastern mountains as that monsoon activity picks up. We have flood watches in the Sacramento Mountains and the New Mexico Sangre de Cristos right in here. Some of those storms may produce two inch per hour rainfall amounts. In the northern plains, it looks like we're picking up a little bit of wildfire smoke from Canada. Also a complex of thunderstorms from northern Missouri into the Fall City, Nebraska area, maybe back towards Lincoln. SPC has a slight risk of severe thunderstorms for that area, and there are severe thunderstorm watch boxes out for this complex. Definitely pushing out quite a boundary. That's going to be outflow surging to the south. And when it's this extensive, we definitely want to take a look at the surface data, looking for areas of very high wind. And it looks like the maximum I'm seeing is going to be 32 miles an hour at Pittsfield, Illinois. Also got 30 miles an hour at Marshall, Missouri. And I think that is about the highest that I'm seeing along that outflow boundary. Most of the rest of it is into the 10 to 20 mile an hour range. In the southwestern U.S., major heat wave underway. Back on Sunday, Las Vegas set a new all-time record, 120 degrees. Yesterday, Barstow, located about here, they tied their all-time record, 118 degrees. And yesterday, we saw 122 at Needles. That was not an all-time high. Today, Las Vegas expecting 118, which would be an all-time record if not for what happened earlier this week. Phoenix looking for 117. And the deserts will range anywhere from 107 to 121. Here's how it looks around that part of the country. 115 at Phoenix. That's going to be 7 degrees short of their all-time record. Las Vegas up to 117, if not for what happened earlier this week. That would tie the all-time record. Some extreme heat in the deserts. 115 there at China Lake and the San Joaquin Valley looking at 100s, but it will be getting pretty bad going into the later part of this week. We're already at 112 at Redding, but some very significant differences between the cool coastal area, temperatures just into the 60s barely, and 100s in the interior regions. Here's the 500 millibar chart showing the culprit, big subtropical high centered across Nevada. Northerly flow coming into New Mexico, bringing some slightly cooler air aloft. Now you can see that the center of this high is only about 595 to 596 decameters. Earlier this summer, the news media made a big deal of the 600 decameter line. You can see that only with 595, we can get some pretty significant heat going. We'll just give you a quick preview going into the rest of the week. That high expands for a couple days then gradually gets displaced to the east over Colorado and the Four Corners going into Sunday. That puts most of the western U.S. under this southerly flow, and that will help erode some of that heat and bring the temperatures down a little bit. We've also got heat problems in the northwestern U.S. and some wildfire smoke as well. Excessive heat warning from the Cascades all the way to the Rockies today and tomorrow, including Spokane, Pendleton, and Boise. Highs yesterday in Seattle reached 98 degrees, and Portland got up to 104. Salem, 106, and Eugene, 106, which tied the all-time record for the month. The highs in Oregon broke daily records by a large margin, up to 10 degrees at many of those stations. Inland highs reached 109 at Pasco, 107 at Winnemucca, and Medford, Oregon. And they got up to 106 at Reno and in Ontario, Idaho. All those were records for the date. A little bit of relief for today in Seattle, looking for highs only in the 80s. But inland, 108 expected today at Boise and 104 for Spokane. Pasco expecting 109. What do we actually have? Let's take a look. 
Yes, at the moment, we're up to 107 at Boise. Not sure we have Pasco in here. Will that come up on the plot? Yeah, 106. That's definitely one of the hot spots in Washington and Seattle down to a pleasant 88 degrees. Much cooler up to the north with 76 at Bellingham. So heading out to the west coast, there's that North Pacific High. Rather weak for this time of year. That should be well up towards 1036 millibars. Going further north into Alaska, stormy in the Gulf of Alaska. Deep southerly flow bringing a plume of moisture up into southeastern Alaska. Widespread rain from Whitehorse down to Fort Nelson and Juneau. We do have severe thunderstorm watches in northern British Columbia and up towards Watson Lake along the Alaskan Highway. Further to the east, we've got a little bit of Arctic air. Actually, this time of year, that would be just plain polar air coming south. So much cooler, but this is indicative of some cold upper level conditions. So we're getting some of the instability producing showers, cold core type convection up there around... Uh, I guess that would be Baker Lake and Igloolik. In the prairies, widespread heat warnings, including all of Saskatchewan, all of Alberta, all of southern British Columbia, and all the way back into parts of Manitoba. We are expecting highs from 90 to 100 degrees. You can see already we've had 99 at Medicine Hat, Alberta. Further to the east, Rainfall warnings across parts of Ontario and Quebec as the remains of Beryl move up the St. Lawrence Seaway. We do have rainfall warnings posted around Toronto, Montreal, and heat warnings across all of the Maritimes. Temperatures were up towards 90 degrees earlier today. Here's a look at the integrated vapor transport showing areas of moisture advection. You can see things are pretty calm out there in the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean and just this very zonal east to west flow towards Nicaragua. A little bit of enhanced moisture coming together. This is going to rapidly couple with the southerly flow as we get into Thursday and Friday. There it is. This is kind of a mini atmospheric river affecting the east coast that will have effects on Virginia and North Carolina. A little bit of a disturbance coming together. We're going to look at that a little bit more closely on the U.S. chart. And then things quiet down. Just a series of stable waves moving east to west. And next week looks pretty good across much of the tropics. All right, we need to get this wrapped up, so let's look at the forecast. This is the GFS panel for right now. There's the remains of Barrel, and they just continue on up into Lake Ontario into tomorrow morning. For tomorrow afternoon, looking for that heat rotating clockwise right there into Montana. Temperatures will be coming up to 103 at Glasgow and 102 at Billings and Sheridan. SPC marginal risk close to this warm front from the Black Hills into northeastern Colorado, kind of a low-end risk of wind and hail. Tornadoes not expected. Heat will diminish in the southwestern deserts starting on Thursday, but one bad day coming up for the Sierras, the San Joaquin Valley. It's going to be very hot right in here. Looking for 111 at Sacramento, 115 at Fresno, 112 at Bakersfield, and 115 at Redding. Reno will get up to 106 and Ukiah 110. And the Weather Prediction Center has a marginal risk of excessive rainfall in southeastern Arizona and central New Mexico. Then we go into Friday. That heat wave moves into parts of Wyoming. Highs on Friday will reach 99 degrees at Rapid City. Salt Lake City expected to be up to 104, and they're going to be up to 104 again on Saturday. And there's that disturbance out there in the Carolinas. The Weather Prediction Center has a slight risk of excessive rainfall on the East Coast from Wilmington up the Delmarva into New Jersey. So that's going to be a small tropical disturbance tracking right up the coast. And you can see how things are looking with those seven-day QPFs. Looking for a widespread area of two to four inches with some isolated five-inch amounts from Wilmington up to Norfolk and right up to Chesapeake Bay. Then we go into Saturday, lots of monsoon activity in the Rockies. 
We're going to be seeing a heat wave continuing to grip the northern plains, temperatures peaking at Rapid City with 102 and Bismarck with 95. A marginal risk of excessive rainfall across most of Arizona as another wave of monsoon activity picks up. And there it is. Rainfall picking up for northern Minnesota. Looks like an MCS coming together around Bismarck, maybe moving out towards Grand Forks during the evening. Then on Sunday, more heat for the central plains. We're going to be seeing the temperatures up to 102 at Denver, 104 at Goodland, and 105 at Salina. A marginal risk of excessive rainfall in the Great Lakes area, especially in Michigan, and in the southwestern U.S., marginal risk expanding into Arizona. We're talking about rainfall, not severe weather. Marginal risk of excessive rainfall as another monsoon surge gets underway. And that will do it for this edition of Forecast Lab. Thank you very much to our supporters, including our newest supporter, John Menefee. All right, we'll see everybody back here again for the Friday edition coming up in a couple days. Hope you have a great Wednesday night, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.